Hi, my name is Robert Gogatz. I'm a County Public Health Coordinator. I understand this year your challenge is to take a look at the budget of the animal shelter and make some decisions from, from uh, the budget as far as uh, what we can spend and what we can't. I'd just like you to keep in mind that the animal shelter serves a number of purposes and one is it's a disease prevention facility. Um, a lot of animals can transmit diseases to humans, so we have to be very careful with it. And we have to make sure that the animal shelter stays clean and sanitary so that we don't have diseases and r running rampant there. Uh, we bring in animals from all over the county and we try to get them back to their owners and we also try uh, to find new homes for them uh, when people turn them in. It's important to note that there are people who like to donate money to the animal shelter and we can use some of those funds for our operations. But please don't steal them too much because we, we need those funds for a rainy day and also for operating during the year. They really help us to keep the animals safe and to try to make them a little bit more comfortable while they're staying with us. So have a good time uh, and learn a lot again this year and I'll be talking to you. Thank you very much and have a great day. Good morning. My name is Bill Weisgarber. I'm with the Burlington County Health Department. Um, I understand one of the interests this year for the students is to talk about and examine the animal shelter. Uh, the animal shelter falls under the Burlington County Health Department specifically because of rabies. Rabies is a very serious disease that we need to make sure that we control in our pets and as well as like the human population. We basically intake between 7,000 to 8,000 animals per year at the shelter. We intake cats and we intake also dogs. Also our shelter services all the public in Burlington County. They can come to the shelter anytime. They can review our dogs and cats that are available for adoption. About uh, since 19, 2005 we started a spay neuter program. That program involves a veterinarian who's contracted. He also contracts with three to four veterinarian technician assistants who work for us essentially. We have at least one there full time. We have 19 staff that care and feed for the animals. Caring and feeding for the animals, um, you'll need to consider this in your deliberations. It's a 365 day a year job. And um, because of our intake of seven to 8,000 animals a year, I guess you can understand the amount and level of work that's involved in a public animal shelter. So I've covered a little bit about adoptions. We need people in the front office who handle the paperwork for adoptions, um, where you come in and you place an application. We need people to investigate the applications, make sure that the uh, the persons may not be dog abusers or cat abusers. So we test dogs for heartworms. Uh, we'll test for parvovirus. We'll test cats for feline leukemia and feline leukemia. And then there's also a, an HIV virus uh, that's found in cats, which is not transmissible to humans. But we'll also test cats for that as well. So there's um, funding that's necessary for the medications. Um, and for the immunizations that we provide. It's probably going to be for the students one of the more challenging things to look at in terms of where can you make cuts. Um, uh, it's probably going to be very difficult. We're, we're currently running at an operation that I would consider uh, a skeleton staff almost. Um, we certainly could use more help, but because of the budgetary concerns and the budget limitations, there's always limitations of budgets, we have, to, we have to make the best with what we have currently available. And we try to assist um, the animal shelter by using other programs. So um, you have some very difficult issues to think about if uh, you were planning a budget. Um, like I said, we have about 19 personnel. We have three or four part-time workers. Um, we have volunteers, so we try to seek as much as we can from the public in terms of volunteer assistance. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ingrid Cosman, and I help prepare the budget at the Burlington County Health Department. Uh, the animal shelter is your topic of interest, so I will focus on that for you. So one thing you want to look at in budgets is 
comparing what you did last year and if you can the year before because it gives you what's called a trend analysis uh, which is important in budgeting it gives you your first steps to do the new budget uh, and if you're looking to do the 2010 budget uh, that's what we would be looking at this year when we start our budget process uh, at the animal shelter we would look at revenues what we would anticipate revenues to be uh, people come into the shelter and adopt animals. We get revenue for that. We also build municipalities for services that are rendered throughout the community. That is another segment of revenue that we anticipate. Uh, we also get donations because the animal shelter is a very favorable place. Uh, children love to come and the animals are very popular. So people like to donate money and they also donate food and uh, all sorts of items around Christmas time and throughout the year. So all that gets put together and we anticipate getting some of that in the next uh, budgetary cycle. Uh, what we have to do is then look at our expenditures and what we anticipate there. And you heard about the personnel, there are 19 people who work in the shelter and those people have salary cost and they also have what's called a fringe benefit cost. Within the fringe benefit cost is their health benefits, uh, the different side of taxes that we have to pay from the county perspective that gets reported to the uh, treasury of the government, uh, payroll taxes for example. So that is the largest expense of the shelter is the personnel cost. And those 19 people need to be there to clean, uh, to see people, customers. Uh, they're open, uh, it's a 24 seven operation. So the personnel cost is very important and very key at the animal shelter. Uh, the next cost, uh, we have a veterinarian on site and the contracts for the veterinarian are probably the second highest cost. Uh, you also have to feed the animals, you have to clean the animals, so there's food, uh, there's cleaning, and that comes under a coupon. Uh, the coupon in the budgetary process is a way of uh, reporting up through the county system in the budget, and the animal shelter coupon is unique to the health department. No other department will have that particular coupon. Underneath that coupon are your line item budget items. Uh, for example, cleaning supplies would be a line item. Uh, veterinarian contract costs would be a line item. And these items also pyramid throughout uh, into the county budget. So everything reports up, starts at this local level and then reports up to the overall county budget. Uh, so we look at those costs comparably. We'll look at what were the cleaning supplies last year? Uh, how are we running this year? We'll only have so many months of operation this year. Um, say we have six months of operation that we know what we are in the current year. We have to estimate through the next six months and then make our forecast for the following year. So it, it's a very important process that you're being given you will uh, feel the challenge that we feel here at the health department every year as we budget. The dollar is becoming um, very uh, valuable uh, within budgets and everyone's competing for that funding dollar throughout their programs. So we always have to make a cause of why we need every dollar that goes into our budget. So good luck on your mission and uh, enjoy the process. You'll learn a lot.